What's up everybody? This is D from Brooklyn giving you a just an update and a quick overview of the nano tank. One thing I'm going to do and I'm going to do it very quickly is provide very quick and and uh, important pieces of information for keeping a nano tank because people see nano tanks and they think oh i'm just going to get a little 10 gallon tank 20 gallon tank and set it up real quick boom 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 but i just want to say that setting up a smaller tank or any reef tank for what it's worth is a bit of a chore and it does require research and attention the smaller the tank the more attention you need to pay because Small tanks have bigger issues quicker than larger tanks do. Larger tanks provide a little bit of cushion as far as uh, providing room for error with the uh, chemistry and things that go wrong and alkalinity and pH and everything swings. So uh, let's take a look at the tank. And I want to start with the side view because it actually has become one of my favorite views. This is the side view of my little... 20 gallon frag tank which started as a frag tank but quickly became a uh, coral garden so uh, I just want to start with an overview the tank is a 20 gallon uh, there is no external equipment everything is inside the tank it has been partitioned so that the overflow is on the far end of the tank and the return is in the front of the tank and I'll show you a bit of that real quick in a minute but while we're over here, I'll give you a view of my WP25, which is made by JBO, which pushes the water to the overflow, as you can see right here. This tank has only that for uh, return circulation, and it's powered by a Via Aqua return pump, which I believe is about 500 gallons per hour in the overflow section, which pushes the water through a spin stream and provides all the circulation that you see by the movement of the waving zinnia. Okay, let's move to the side of the tank. Now in looking at the side view, you can actually get a better idea of the size of the tank, its inhabitants, and see what is powering the tank. The tank is being skimmed by a Reef Octopus Nano Skimmer, which I'll give you a better view of. This is all built into the tank. It is a 4x12, I believe, section that I've divided with a piece of acrylic. As you can see, this is the return, which is powered by the Via Aqua pump right here. And it sends the water up into the spin stream, which you can see right here is turning. And that provides the circulation for the tank. As you can see, it covers pretty much from the surface to the base of the tank. And all the corals pretty much get a regular rotating flow of water without using as much energy as adding multiple pumps. Another thing that it does save you is power because you don't need additional power to uh, run the tank. So, uh, the water is run via my overflow, which you can see there. Let me give you a shot. The snail's kind of in the way right now. But if I can zoom in, you can see the teeth. That is the, you can see the water movement actually moves really quickly into the overflow. And that is filtered by filter floss, which you can see right there. Gets dirty. I pull a piece out. I throw it in the garbage. And that also helps oxygenate the water. Let me see if I can focus a little bit. I don't want to drop my phone in there. Okay. So you can see it agitates the water and pushes it into the filter floss, which is why I have that little half inch lip to make sure the water actually runs through the filter floss and not around it. In that area, it runs into the skimmer, which you can see pulls out a little bit of gunk nice little nasty stuff for a tank this size and that is predominantly all the filtration that I have in there really simple system um, one of the most important things about keeping a small tank is uh, you gotta monitor it and I figured the simpler you keep it the easier it is to monitor um, there's minimal rock there's no sand in this tank 
My sand bed is basically my uh, hybrid mushrooms. I've been currently dosing the tank with carbocalcium, which is a pretty new uh, product by Tropic Marin that I ran into at the Reefa Palooza. Uh, thank you, Doc, for giving me the overview. I just wanted to let him know I'm using it, and it actually works. I have been uh, dosing this uh, for the past, I want to say, since, what, October? So November, December, January, February, four months, and the colors are really, really uh, popping. As you can see, my purples are really purple. My greens are really green. And uh, does a good job. Um, back to nano specs. If you're dosing a nano tank, you want to underdose it rather than try to overdose it. Because once again, you don't want any quick swings in the water chemistry. You don't want to do anything quick in a nano tank. You want to take your time. If it asks for five milliliters per uh, 20 gallons, I usually do half of that, doing like two and a half. And I measure it, not with a cap, but I measure it with uh, one of these, which is really good. You can get these at your pharmacy. It's like a little baby doser. You can see it has one mil, two mil. I am much more comfortable dosing with these than gambling how much is in a capful. So uh, I do that. Water changes. I do not do more than half. I do about uh, five gallon water changes to this tank. It's 20 gallons. So really, if you subtract this section, which I really don't have to because it's still filled with water, but I count this tank as a 17 gallon, uh, leaving three gallons between overflow and return. So I underdose the tank. But uh, in doing that, uh, I want to make sure that it is underdosed rather than overdosed because once again you can always check and monitor and add a little bit at a time and with a small tank it is very important to do things slowly. Um, this is powered by a 150 watt, actually it's a 200 watt heater which is down here. Um, I believe in going one bigger when it comes to heaters and equipment as well as filtration because this tank, a 20 gallon, they'll probably tell you you can use a 50 gallon to a 100 gallon heater. But I found that going bigger, the heater does not run as much. As you can see back there, it's not running right now. When it, it cuts on, that turns red. And it is right now, it's in the green, which means it's at the uh, satisfied temperature. It's powered by an old Ocean Revive light, no timer. This is old school. <laughs> Ocean Revive light, which is really nice. I have it on super blues. The blues are all the way up. The daylights are probably at about 60%, maybe a little bit less. Um, a lot of SPS. You can see the LPS, of, co of course. And they are really growing really fast. So uh, the carbocalcium really does a good job of pushing growth. I even have mushrooms spreading around the front don't know where that guy came from got a little aptasia peeking out there little tube worm that has begun spreading his little sweeper thingies uh, if you can see it right there I'm trying to point out right there's the tube for that guy but he hasn't been bothering anything so I'll leave well enough alone Pacillopora is quickly getting overgrown by Favia and this is another problem in a nano tank um, it's a good problem, but corals grow very quickly and become very aggressive in fighting other corals. So one thing to keep in mind, if you've looked at this tank over the years, there have been soft corals, which I absolutely had to remove just based on their growth. Pavona is one of them. Clowns are really fat right now. You can see here. can't keep too many fish in a system this small because it will push aggression in your fish so that is something else to keep in mind when keeping a smaller system you can't dump all of the fish that you want to dump like you got a, a hundred gallon system so if you got a pair you're gonna pretty much have a pair and be happy with that these guys are pretty much paired out um, I have my cleanup crew 
Once again, that is a bio block. That is not sand, uh, which I started this tank in with. My rock anemone, which is probably doubled in size since I started feeding him, is doing very well. Bright yellow, I feed it some mysis every week, and it really loves it. Closes up really quick and opens up again. Um, Pacillopora, I got some zoas. I started this one with about three heads. I think it has nine or ten last time I looked. Pallies down here, pallies. Zoas, which have grown completely out of control into the egg crate. <laughs> Another good problem. I recently had to cut the zinnia because not only did it kill my beautiful chalice that I had back there, I'm trying to cut this glare, trying to, failing, but uh, it really started swinging this way to where it, this used to be a beautiful piece of chalice, <laughs> used to be, that literally grew around that rock and now it is gone. So uh, I had to do some trimming. Wow, I didn't even notice down. That is growing down the other side, too. Pavona is really, really quick grower. Beautiful, beautiful coral, but it is really aggressive. I used to have pulsing zinnia, and when I pulled the pulsing zinnia out, the pavona quickly took its place. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Nano tanks, when they grow, you have to be like a gardener. You have to trim and prune regularly. Another thing in this would be water changes and temperature swings. In a small system, temperature swings can be detrimental. I mean, you got to check every day, make sure your heater is running, which is why I have this lovely old school right there. Can't see it because of the reflection, but I can take a look at this and know that I'm in the green all the time. Good old fashioned mercury never goes wrong. And, uh... You just have to do your homework. You got to know what you're keeping. You have to be uh, level headed as to what you can keep in it and what you can't. And you have to monitor and test, which is why I have my fold down down here with my top off. This is from my son's protein powder, but I found it to be an excellent one gallon top off holds my tsunami top off, which gets topped off right into this area. You can see right here, it comes over and dumps its water right into here and mixes so I don't have any fluctuations in salinity and all is well in the universe. So uh, there's a lot that goes into keeping a smaller system, but once it's running, you can sit back and pretty much let it do its thing. Simple is better. You don't need a lot of equipment, but... When you don't have a lot of equipment, you have to substitute it with time and energy. So this is an update. The tank is about, I want to say it's four years old. I've literally had it packed with coral, took them out, started over again, packed it again, took them out, started out. This used to be all Kenya trees, took all of them out. Then it was all pulsing zinnia, took all of them out. Now it is quickly becoming Pavona country. You can actually see this growing up into my Pacilla right here. I'm going to probably pop that off and get some coral glue and make a little barrier to keep that off. I don't want it growing into this coral, which is what it looks like it's trying to do. And uh, comes down to what you like. You keep what you like. So this is D, giving you an update on the tank. Keep your tanks, keep it simple. Till next time, I'm out. See ya.